Hello fellow plot questers, it is I, Aaron the Plot Quester. So, today I've got this amazing book, Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And right before we get into it, now I am aware of the pretty serious essay allegations towards one of the authors of this book, and I'm not trying to condone that in any, any way, but I, I kind of read this book and it's kind of bad timing, but I don't want to just let this book go without reviewing it because it was, as a book, quite a good book. So please note that when I'm talking about this book, and I'm also going to compliment it a lot, I'm complimenting the writing, not the necessarily the creator of the writing. So with that out of the way, let's get straight in. With good omens. As per usual, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking about the plot summary, then I'll be talking about kind of the themes that it deals with, then my kind of analysis of it. Let's get straight into it. So, the plot summary first. Basically, Armageddon is coming. In a couple of years, the apocalypse will come, the world will end, Judgment Day, you know, as the Christians call it, hell will rise, heaven will rise, they'll fight to the death, and probably, hopefully, heaven will win, at least according to the Bible. The two main characters, actually there's a lot of main characters, but two main characters that we start with, Crowley and Aziraphale. I, I don't know if I'm saying that name right, I'm sorry, Good Omens fans, if I am butchering the name. My bad. So. Crowley is a demon. It, I'm pretty sure this is Crowley on the cover, right here. That's Crowley. And Aziraphale is an angel. And they're besties. They're actually really, really good friends. And Crowley is actually the, the, the snake that lied to Eve and made her eat the forbidden apple. So I, they, they go way back, right? And, you know, they are, as demons and angels, meant to follow this plan that their superiors have told them, told them, you know, like, Judgment Day is supposed to come, they're supposed to, you know, let the Antichrist do their thing and, and make, the, make Armageddon happen, right? But they've gotten way too attached to humanity. Aziraphale just loves certain music and, and his books and his bookstore, and Crowley loves the modern comforts of technology, of this lovely classic antique car. Yeah. So, in other words, they don't want the apocalypse to come. So they hatch a lovely daring mission. They decide they're gonna switch out the baby of the Antichrist, right? And they're gonna switch him out for another baby. And they'll raise the baby, uh, no, and they'll let another family raise the baby on their own. And as that, as that kid is raised, they'll try to influence that kid to be both good and evil so that the kid will, like, you know, decide to not destroy the world, right? You know, that's kind of the plan. But unfortunately, this baby-switching shenanigan goes completely wrong. Why? Well, what happens is... There's a triple baby switch, essentially. They switch out the Antichrist, they, they, at least they try to with another kid, but uh, the, uh, the kid that was supposed to be Antichrist was switched with another kid, and something really complicated happens, and I don't want to visualize it nor understand it, but, essentially, Adam, the Antichrist, we didn't get them. They were given to a completely normal family called the Youngs, and they, we lost the Antichrist, right? But they don't know that, and a decade passed, and a hellhound is supposed to appear, and and greet the Antichrist, and they're supposed to like start destroying the world. And they're both, and Crowley and Aziraphale are watching the kid that they that they switched out, and they're watching him, and they're waiting for him to you know manifest his demonic powers as the son of Satan and all that, right? And and they're looking at him, and they're going, "There's no no hellhound, nothing. We got the wrong baby. We got the wrong baby, ladies and gentlemen. We've lost the goddamn Antichrist." Man, what a funny sentence to say. Anyways, so we've got this huge massive problem so, so that the kid, kid grows up and we've, we've lost the Antichrist. So, the apocalypse is starting. Toes are ringing from the side, Atlantis is rising, UFOs are visiting the Earth, nuclear weapons are disappearing, nuclear generators and weapons are disappearing from where they're supposed to be. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, are, who, you know, are supposed to be riding horses, who are actually riding motorbikes, and one of them is really hot, apparently, I don't know. Um, they're also, you know, riding and doing their thing to destroy the world, and things are crazy. Things are not a good time. Meanwhile, on the side, there's this 
lovely book of prophecies written by Agnes Nutter, who was one of the greatest witches of all time. And she basically foresaw everything that's going to happen, wrote it in this book, how to prevent the apocalypse and all that. Um, that's kind of why this, the second title of Good Omens is The Nice and Accurate Prophecies of Agnes Nutter Witch. That's the name of the f f prophecy booklet thing. And I do want to mention how I love how the prophesying works, but because, because basically Agnes Nutter, it was more like she was remembering things from the past to write down, except that past wasn't the future. It, it wasn't the past, it was the future, I mean, that's confusing. So she's remembering the future. It's weird, right? But I, I kind of like that. I think that kind of makes sense. Anyway, so she wrote this prophecy of exactly everything that's going to happen. This book about everything that's going to happen, right? Up until the end, Judgment Day. And how to stop it as well. But uh, they have no idea. It's not great. It's not good. Um, and the, the descendant, Anathema, actually loses the book. But thankfully, Aziraphale picks it up and reads it. And, and we have this interesting situation. The descendant of the witch, Anathema, and Newt Pulsifer, who is a witch hunter, are also trying to stop the apocalypse according to the notes that they have. And there's also a crazy old witch hunter man and a nice grandma. And we've got an angel, a demon, a, a, a descendant of a witch that wrote a prop book of prophecies about everything that's going to happen up until the apocalypse. Newt Pulsifer, a kind of a loser and an insult, who is a witch hunter and who is a descendant of a witch hunter. And the crazy old witch hunter man that's probably a racist and a nice grandma. And these weirdo misfits, basically, they have to stop the apocalypse from happening. Meanwhile, Adam, the Antichrist, was brought up in a normal household with normal friends while doing normal things. Interesting, right? So, basically, the ending of the book, spoiler alert, I guess, the Antichrist has grown up to be neither good nor evil. He's just a kid. He's just human. So, he doesn't want the world to end. He stopped Armageddon from happening, but he doesn't do more than that. Anathema, the witch, witch, the witch, she's a witch, um, asks him, like, hey, you know, you could, you know, get all the whales back, you know, bring back extinct species, and he's like, well, how's that going to change anything, right? Humanity needs to change for itself. And that's kind of how the book ends. Really, really interesting. I know, bit of a wild ride, and I, I couldn't even compress, that's the compressed version, like, I, I couldn't even talk in detail about really a lot of parts that are important, but that's the gist of it. Themes. As the ending might suggest, we have this theme of human self-determination, right? We need to solve our problems ourselves. An all-powerful being isn't just going to help us out of this mess that we've created. We need to do that ourselves, and that's an excellent message that I completely agree with. There's also this underlying message, kind of similar to actually Oedipus Rex, which I just reviewed like a day ago, um, is like fate versus free will, right? You know, this kid is fated to destroy the world, but according to his free will, he doesn't want to. And he doesn't, right? And that's the point. It's beautiful. And it conveys... it. This book conveys the beauty of the human experience, of humanity in itself, with our silly, wacky, stupid things. It, we, we still have, it's still beautiful. We're, we're beautiful, you know? And it's, it's a hopeful book at the end of the day. And, and it encapsulates everything that I love about humanity and everything that I hate. And I think that's a good way to put it. Analysis. First of all, book was absolutely hilarious. The elements that made it hilarious is obviously kind of the absurd element kind of all these really funny things happening, and honestly, really ingenious ways of which the, you know, the characters fight, the characters interact with each other. Absolutely hilarious. Slapstick comedy. Even better. And the little footnotes, um, I think I can just straight up just show you guys, like, I don't know, open a flip to a random page. There should be, right, so, I just saw some. Here. So there's these random footnotes. <laughs> like and and on random like like this like just 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 random fun nights and they're so funny it's just completely out of pocket just just completely random bits of TMIs essentially that just go that just over explains a, a small detail in a really hilarious way and I think it's just I've never seen a lot of books pull that off successfully comedically before and this book is something that does just that. 
the hopeful message ingrained within the dark comedy that I just mentioned is also amazing. How essentially humanity needs to save itself, and sometimes the most useful, useless skills of all is a skill. The two examples of this, obviously, as I've already mentioned, is Adam, the Antichrist, refusing to fix the world with his powers of destruction and creation, because he thinks even if he does, humanity will just... If he brings back the whales to humanity, that won't stop humanity from killing whales. We, as humans, need to make that decision for ourselves, right? An omnipotent being isn't going to help with that first. Second, um, Newt. Now, I didn't, I didn't talk about too much. This is the insult witch hunter. And one thing that I didn't talk too much about him, he's actually probably my favorite character in the book. Essentially, he's terrible with computers, and every time he tries to fix a computer, it, it breaks. So we have this situation in the book where essentially every single nuke in the world is about to drop down and destroy the world and start a, a nuclear holocaust, right? Kill everyone on, on the planet and, and, you know, destroy all life, you know, that kind of thing, you know, the apocalypse, right? And we have these computers rigged to do just that and <laughs> Newt tries to fix the computer that, that's programmed to sound all the missiles down and kill us all. And that breaks the computer and stops the missiles from hitting everyone. So I think that's just a great moment. That's obviously kind of funny, but also I think it shows kind of this, this absurd, like even if we have, you know, even if someone else says, you know, you're, you're useless, right? Like you, know, you, every time you touch a computer, it breaks. Even though that person might say that's, you know, not a skill and other people might say that in, other situations when the context changes, those skills that other people in that in a different context says is useless might be incredibly useful. In fact, they might save the world in, in the case of good omens, right? Which is a dramatic example. But I think that's just a great message. Like all of us have our specialties and other people might say, you know, that's stupid or whatever. But with the world, how is it how it is now with even like with the internet as well, right? You can make you can be successful and you can be appreciated for doing a lot of weird things that you wouldn't think would do well. Like I saw this guy on YouTube the other day making armor out of pineapple skin. Fireproof armor out of pineapple skin. Like, you know, a lot of people would think that's useless, but that's getting like millions of views, right? So I feel like that's just a great way of saying, hey, it's okay to be you and you will be appreciated like that in the right environment, I think, which is an amazing message. 10 out of 10 book, perfect, beautiful book. Um, I thought it was one of the best fantasy books, uh, books in general that I've ever read. It was just absolutely gripping, amazing, amazing book. Uh, one thing that I do want to talk about is kind of the ending where there's this interview section about how they wrote the book and essentially, apparently, they just yelled at each other over a phone call and then wrote sections of it, and basically it was a competition to see who could make the other person laugh more, and it was messy, and, and that just, I guess, like, I guess that gives me a lot of encouragement personally as a writer, because, you know, I, I'm also, you know, laughing with my friends in our little Discord call, going, hey, you know, let's fix this, let's fix that, what about this, what do you like about that, and a, a lot of times that really motivates me to write that next chapter of my book, right, and the fact that, you know, two of one of the, the, the some of the greatest fantasy authors that's ever lived and definitely in this in this century had went through the same process of a through phone calls rather than you know discord call discord voice calls um it's really heartwarming and i and realize and it kind of makes me realize hey maybe someday if i work hard enough and i'm lucky enough i, I can be like these guys and i think that's just personally that's really awesome as well so this book contains a really hopeful message, hilarious plot, amazing and ingenious ideas on how to write. And it personally motivates me to follow this path of writing. 10 out of 10. I can't repeat that enough. Like always, your plot quester, Aaron the Plot Quester, amazing book, 100% recommend. If you haven't read this, you can't claim to read. Have a great day.